<laughs> What's so funny? It's just like... Just thinking of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> to me? You wouldn't get it. This is it, the last video of the year. Feels weird that we're going into 2020. We in future times now, but I'm gonna get to the point. Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker. It's, uh, not great. And for once, people across the board actually agree that it's not great. Critics and audiences agree that the movie's bad, more than likely because J.J. Abrams actively had to repair everything that Ryan Johnson left behind. And Ryan Johnson's more than likely gonna get blacklisted from Disney if Kathleen Candy gets thrown out. But yes, that's why it is bad. You can deny it all you want and pretend Last Jedi was a good movie, The Rise of Skywalker's damage control the movie, but none of this matters. If you want a full review of the movie, then you'll be disappointed, because I haven't watched it, nor will I ever watch it. One, I actively refuse to give Disney money, because fuck that mouse. Two, why would I watch a movie that I already know is going to be bad? It's slicing off an ear to spite your face. Instead, I want to talk about the shit around Rise of Skywalker, the sleaziness and hypocrisy of Disney Star Wars. So for those those unaware, the Rotten Tomatoes score for Rise of Skywalker is, uh, strange, to say the least. Ever since release, it has stayed at an 86%, which isn't possible as reviews pile up. It would fluctuate, up or down, as the numbers come in. So for it to stay a single number for so long is suspicious as all hell. But when you actually look into the reviews, you find a very weird pattern. A lot of verified users with no profile picture and only one review to their name, Rise of Skywalker. A lot of people are unwilling to say what it is directly, but it's clear that Disney is stuffing the ballot box to save their asses. Wanna know why? Because this isn't the first time this happened. Reviews were purged from Captain Marvel and Last Jedi for trolls and toxicity, which is odd considering that this only seems to happen when a Disney movie is involved. I wonder what could possibly explain things. Oh, it looks like the, uh, CEO of Fandango, the parent company to Rotten Tomatoes, is Paul Yanover, a former Disney executive. Wow, it's almost like Rotten Tomatoes has a financial incentive to protect Disney properties. So that's pretty bad. Rotten Tomatoes fixing the review scores of Disney films, considering their CEO used to work there, meaning there is possible active collusion between a production company and a review site. Come on. Come on, baby. I just want out. Keep this in mind next time Rotten Tomatoes try something like this again. Now I'm gonna move on to the more fun part of the video. So Star Wars, well media in general, but Star Wars is a large part of the media, has tried its luck with the go-woke philosophy. A lot of the new material focuses on female protagonists and tried to slip in left-wing political messages. Well, I say political message, but it's about as deep as a dropped water bottle on the sidewalk. Basically, white men bad, women strong. It's so obtuse and blatant that I actually feel bad for making fun of it, especially with how poorly done it all is. Obviously, the new franchise is aimed towards children, but that doesn't give you an excuse to get lazy. Studio Ghibli made children's movies. The point is that Disney has tried to appease the Tumblrites that barged in and demanded that only their needs be taken care of, including antagonizing actual fans of Star Wars, then turning around and claiming they're all irrational children for reacting to it. But said philosophy has come to bite them in the ass. Shockingly, the Tumblr crowd that constantly demands for more inclusion never actually spends money on the things they champion. I said earlier that I 
actively refuse to give Disney money, but there are very good reasons for it. The company is extremely unethical, and I do not want to support what they create. It's a conscious choice. The woke crowd demands more and more, but never foots the bill when it's time to do so. They pretend to care up until it becomes inconvenient, because they don't give a shit about minorities of any kind. It's about control. We have control of Star Wars, and we can do what we want with it. That's where the constant deconstruction comes from. It's childish rebellion. They know the decisions are bad, but it pisses off the bad people, so it's okay. But Disney is a corporation, so when the money started to dip, they panicked and stepped in. Then all of a sudden, you saw major backpedaling. You can be woke, so long as Disney doesn't go broke. Don't believe me? Here's a non-Star Wars related example. Around the time that the Aladdin reboot was coming out, Georgia announced stricter laws on abortions, since this was when New York and a few other places allowed third trimester to post-birth abortions, which literally meant it was legal to kill babies. Any other way to describe it is just making excuses. It was fucked up. The point is, Georgia retaliated against the slippery slope by restricting abortion in their state. In response, numerous studios and Hollywood figures came out against Georgia, saying they would boycott filming in their state, including Disney. Now, I could point out the obvious how this wannabe aristocracy is willing to scold Georgia for political decisions while they party with rapists and pedophiles, but I won't. Instead, I'll point out how while Disney was swearing up and down that they'll boycott Georgia for these new laws, they were filming Aladdin in Jordan, a Middle Eastern nation that punishes women that get abortions with fucking prison, and not a single fucking SJW or fucking lefty called them out on it. They just ignored it. Fighting for equality only matters when I'm not scared of being shot with an AK. Kinda hard to take your conviction for inclusivity seriously when you don't address shit like that. And once again, this hypocrisy has shown its ugly face. So there is a small scene in Rise of Skywalker where two women kiss in celebration after Palpatine dies. Yeah, I spoiled it. Don't give Disney your fucking money. Just fucking stop. You do not have to watch the fucking movie. Stop consuming product. Just stop. Just stop it. Stop. No. Just stop it. Well, this scene is extremely brief, and most were wondering why it was even in the film if it was so short. Obviously, you know why it was in it, so they can get woke points for having the first gay kiss on Star Wars, but there was a reason it was so short. You see, certain countries really do not like gay people. Shockingly, other nations have different views on how people should live their lives. Disney knows this as well, and in the Singapore version of Rise of Skywalker, along with a few other nations, the scene is completely edited out. So, the company that promises that it cares about LGBT LGBT types and minorities actively kneecaps them at every step when money gets involved. Because this isn't the first time Star Wars got changed to appease to different markets. When Force Awakens was first getting teased, all the promotional material pointed towards Finn becoming the Jedi of the trilogy. Trailers and promo images constantly showed him off holding a lightsaber. Well, as it turns out, China really does not like black people. So think about this, about how squandered Finn is in the trilogy. Is it not possible that Finn was originally planned to actually be the main focus of the trilogy, and he got sidelined into being funny black man because they were afraid of China throwing a temper tantrum? Don't think that's possible? Well, look at Rose Tico. All jokes aside, the real reason she got sidelined is way more fucked up than just nobody bought her toys. Rose was thrown into The Last Jedi since she was supposed to be the Asian character. Disney fully assumed China would be all on board with her and would come out in droves to see an Asian in Star Wars. Well, anyone that knows even a little bit of Asian history knows that it's more complicated than that. Kelly Marie Tran is Vietnamese, and China fucking hates the Vietnamese, just like how they hate black people. And these aren't assumptions either. Asians really can get fucking racist, especially to each other. This is why Finn and Rose got smaller roles in the story as the trilogy went on, because China didn't like them. And instead of Disney simply taking the L and allowing the characters to be fleshed out important members of the cast, they capitulated and neutered them. The two got robbed. Is there definitive proof of this theory, nothing concrete, and Disney probably had them all sign NDAs so they can't really come out and talk about how shitty Disney was, but if you watch their reactions to China long enough, you'll start to see the patterns. Just look at how they completely covered the faces on the Black Panther posters for the Chinese releases. Now obviously, I don't want to judge China for how they do things, you know, beyond how corrupt and fucked up their government is, and their utter desperation to control media across the globe. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh. My point is that Disney really wants to have their cake and eat it too. They want to be champions for social causes, while they bend over backwards to hide minorities for countries that don't like them. This is a message for all the wannabe woke assholes out there. Stop. 
Just fucking stop. Begging billion dollar corporations to give you value in life is pathetic. You people actually think a movie not including a gay character for any reason is causing LGBT types to be murdered. That a female character forced to work for what she wants is perpetuating violence against women. That if a glorified commercial for toys doesn't have black people in it, then no black child will ever have good role models in life. Because obviously, you need to establish your self-worth based off corporate products made by people that think you're retarded piggy banks. Stop believing all these idiotic conspiracy theories that are so batshit insane. You won't get laid. You won't be remembered in history. It's pathetic and annoying. Get your head out of your massive ass for two seconds and look at reality. Disney doesn't care about social causes like inclusivity. They want your money, and the minute they realize you will not give them that money, they will abandon you to die. This is all I can say. Nut up or shut Shut up. And now, with things like The Mandalorian coming out, and rumors that Kathleen Kennedy is going to get fired, I think that day of Disney dropping your asses like hot rocks is coming. And especially with the rumors that there's going to be a KOTOR trilogy, which if you add Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau as head of that, that could actually be really good. But the point is, we might see an end to the woke Star Wars shit. It will not be sudden. It will not be immediate, but it will come, because you didn't support it when you had the chance. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's finally stop talking about Star Wars. See you guys. And as funny as it may seem, some people get their kicks, stopping on a dream. But I don't let it, let it get me down. Cause this fine old world, it keeps spinning around. I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn and a king. I've been up and down and over and out. And I know one thing, each time I find myself laying flat on my face, I just pick myself up and get I'm gonna roll myself up in a big ball and